Now, we will have the reading of the law. Starting in Exodus, the 20th chapter, from verse 1 through 17. Okay, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor as manservant, nor as maidservant, nor as ox, nor as ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh the lie. Now, sisters and brothers, that is the reading of the law. And that is what's going to get you salvation. Like a young man asked Jesus, what should I do to get eternal life? He simply told him, keep the commandments. That's all that simple. As always... It is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. I know, sisters and brothers, this lesson is titled, A Prophet Like Unto Moses, A Prophet Like Unto Moses. And what spurred me, by the grace of God, to put this lesson together is because all we got all these people lying on Jesus, having him behave like no prophecy spoke of, and then a lot of my Hebrew brothers hating on Jesus. And that tells me that neither one of them have an understanding in prophecy. Because Jesus told you, you think you have it's a such a scripture. In them you think you have eternal life, but they are they that testify of me. So we're going to look at this, sisters and brothers, because uh, couldn't nobody with any spiritual eyes miss Jesus, spiritual eyes miss Jesus when he came on, on the scene. Because the Lord already let you know that just like my prophet Moses, you see what happened with Moses? When he come, he's going to do the same thing. 
but he's just going to do it in greater fashion. And we're going to start this in Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Deuteronomy, chapter 18. But wait a minute, let me, let me take a pause right here, sister and brother, before we get off into this lesson. I had a gentleman call, going to question the word a amen, and then some more of the brothers from the class, there was a gentleman in one of our classes, the amen, you know, no, we shouldn't say amen because that is talking about a pagan God. <laughs> I want you to do something for me before we get in this lesson. Because it irritates me when people make statements and don't know what they're doing. So we're going to see if we can find out who this pagan God is. Let's go into Revelation, the third chapter. And we're going to read verse 14, 3 and 14. We're going to see who this pagan God is that's called Amen. Brother said he told the guy, show it to me. He couldn't. Well, okay, I'm going to show you this pagan God. <laughs> Revelation 3, and read verse 14, brother. Read it. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write. This is Jesus now sending this message. These things saith the Amen, uh -huh. the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Oh, oh, oh you mean this Amen here is Jesus, ain't it? You're going to tell me that Jesus is a pagan God? I understand he's supposed to be teaching somebody. You don't know this simplicity? I should put you in the children's class. They will eat you alive. <laughs> because this kind of stuff irritates me when you make statements that only can overthrow the faith of other people. Okay, so much for that. Let's get back to the lesson. Because most of the lesson that are done that I have put together, sisters and brothers, is to straighten out the bad and erroneous teachers, teaching of other people. So we're going to see if Jesus just popped up out of thin air. Or was he already spoken of? Like I said, we're going to do the rum in the 18th chapter now. But I just wanted you to read that. So next time somebody come to you talking about the amen is a pig in God, you flip the book over and read that to them. And tell them, why don't you do something? Go somewhere and hide. Because you should be ashamed. Do the rum in the 18 and we're going to start reading that verse 15. Do the rum in the 18 and 15. That's why... I tell people all the time, when you invite somebody to the Israel of God, tell them to bring a pen, paper, and patience, and also bring your Bible. Because you're going to hear some stuff that you're going to think that we're teaching out of a strange Bible. I want you to bring your Bible. The one that's been collecting dust for the last 50 years. Deuteronomy 18, and we're going to start at verse 15. Okay, go ahead. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, uh -huh. of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him ye shall hearken. Now, see, the Lord came down on Mount Sinai himself, and he gave the Ten Commandments to Israel himself. That's how important it was. He didn't even trust it in the hand of an angel. But when the Lord got through smoking, uh, speaking, and the, and the people saw the smoke and the fire and the sound of the trumpets, which always blow when the coming of the Lord. They said, they moved away from the mountain. In short, they ran away from the mountain and said, look, Moses, we don't want to hear, the word, hear God's voice no more. So I tell you what, you talk to God, and whatever God tells you, you tell us and we will do and obey. And Moses tell him, said, look, the Lord heard you when you said that. And he even told me, they have well said what they have said. I understand them. So I'm going to tell you what. The Lord your God is going to raise up a prophet from among the midst of thee, of thy brother, like unto you. That's what he told Moses. Right. And Moses telling the people, like unto me. And ye shall hearken. Go ahead and read. Verse 16. According to all that thou desires of the Lord thy God in Horeb, 
in the day of the assembly, Go saying, ahead. Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God. Neither let me see this great fire anymore that I, that I die not. Now you got people already telling me, see, the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to Israel, and they said, we don't want to hear him no more lest we die. And they ran away from the mountain. How come you ain't running if he's talking to you? Tell him. I'm just pointing something out. Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. Uh-huh. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, uh -huh. and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. See, that's why Jesus said he speaks only what his father say, and he do only what his father, what he have seen, because he has sent the father, told him how to tell the people. So he said, look, I heard what they said. So I'm going to raise up a prophet from among them like unto you, Moses. And they better hear this prophet. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my word, uh -huh. which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So now if you don't listen to his word, it's going to be required of you. When the Lord used that word required of you, that's talking about the lake of fire, sister and brother. You're going to hear this prophet. So we're going to find out who he is, sisters and brothers. But he said he is just like Moses. So we're going to see what happened to Moses, and we're going to see if this prophet carried out the same thing. Let's go into Exodus, the first chapter. Exodus chapter 1. Because it is evidence, sisters and brothers, that people do not read the Bible. That's all to it. And that's all I do. And people get upset at me and tell people that, that, that listen to me, well, you booey -eyed. No, you ain't. You're a bible -like. Because if it's not in this Bible, it's not going to come out of my mouth, sister and brother. So we're going to Start in Exodus 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 1, because if you, if you were on the way, only way you will be able to recognize this prophet like unto Moses, you have to see what happened to Moses and see if anybody else feel that bill. Verse 1, read it. Now these are the names of the children of Israel which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob. Now, all of Israel went out, it was in Egypt now. And those are the first enslavers we had, Egyptian. People look just like us. But skip down to verse 5. We know, that's another lesson. Verse 5 and go ahead. And all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls. Uh -huh. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Go ahead. And Joseph died and all his brethren, and all that generation. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel were fruitful, and increased abundantly, and multiplied, and waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now, that's Spook, the Pharaoh of the Egyptians, because we, got, we have this is still going on now. We can out-baby anybody. And he kept having all them babies, and the nation was growing like a... A uh, 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 beaver teeth. Go ahead and read. Now there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Uh huh. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Go ahead. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, uh -huh. lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so, Get them up out of the land. Now, I said, now, let's deal wisely with them. Because there's too many of them now. So if we get into it with an enemy, they're going to side with the enemy. Then they're going to get up out of the land. Because Israel becomes some pretty good service to the Egyptians before they even become chattel slaves. But go ahead. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters uh -huh. to afflict them with their burden. Uh -huh. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. I mean, that's what happened. 
You get the one that's in one shape among our people have all the babies. Because you right. ain't got nothing but your wife. That's right. But then they started to afflict him, and that didn't work, sisters and brothers. The more they afflicted him, the more they grew. So now Israel is in channel slavery now. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of the one was Shifra, uh -huh. and the name of the other poor. Go ahead. And he said, when you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But now, if it be a daughter, then she shall live. Now, that's when the Egyptians tried to wipe out the whole nation of Israel, sister and brother. People don't understand it. People like you tried to exterminate you. Because if you kill all the males and save the women, then if the Egyptian or whoever, whatever the nationality lay with the woman, the child would not be Israelite, it would be an Egyptian. Y'all understand? Because you are what your father is. I hear people that aren't say all the time, well, you know, I'm part Greek and I'm part Spanish and I'm part. I said, who, who is your daddy? Well, he's Greek. I said, well, you are all Greek. Just like planting a corn, a, 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 a seed of a corn by the seaside, when it grow up, it's going to be corn. Put it in the mouth and it's going to be corn. Plant it in your window vase. When it grow up, it's going to be corn. The women don't make the difference. It is the male that makes the difference. He carried the seeds, sister and brother. So they tried to get the midwife to exterminate the males. I know because I was, I was uh, 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 delivered by a midwife. Yeah, I was. Next month, I'll be 81 years old. So y'all don't know about midwives and stuff like that. I do. Go ahead and read. Verse 17. But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. So now, couldn't get the midwife to do it, so he gave his own people an order. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21 and read. And it came to pass, because the midwives feared God, that he made them houses. He made them houses. Let's read verse 22. Go ahead. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. So now, sisters and brothers, from that day on, Israelites had to watch their shoulder, look over their back, because they got somebody always looking at their window. They was already child slavery, so they didn't, slaves, so they didn't have no privacy. God could come in his mouth and do whatever. If you're a slave, you ain't got no rights, no nothing. So now, in order for Moses to survive this, because this was the time when Moses was born. Let's go in the Exodus, the second chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1. Go ahead and read. There went a man of the house of Levi, and took the wife a daughter of Levi. Uh -huh. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Most people don't know that Moses was from the priest tribe. He was a Levite. Even though Aaron carried the title, chief priest, Moses was a real chief priest. Right. Because he, rep he represented the chief right now, the chief priest that's sitting on the throne of the father now. So like, when he was born, they hid him for three months. Because, hey, it's pretty rough. They're trying to catch your baby and kill him. Let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. When she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes. Go ahead. And daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. So he put him in the, in, in, in the reeds, right, uh, in the, uh, probably shallow water of the, of the Nile River. Go ahead and read. And his sister stood afar off. To wit what would be done to him. Uh huh. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river. Go ahead. And her maidens walked along by the river's side. Uh huh. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And now, she... Pharaoh's daughter, ain't that something? The daughter of Pharaoh went down by the river. And she ran into this baby here. Not any. Regular Egyptian, the daughter of Pharaoh. 
So you know this was the hand of the Lord. Right. What happened? Go ahead. Verse 6. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. Uh -huh. And she had compassion on him and said, Go ahead. This is one of the Hebrews' children. Uh -huh. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, uh -huh. that she may nurse the child for thee? Go ahead. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, uh -huh. and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Now, when got Moses' mother, now she could raise Moses under the Pharaoh's daughter protection. That made the difference. Because Pharaoh said Moses was hers. And you know, even now, our people are raising a whole lot of other babies and keeping them, especially in slavery. People hear people always call their grandmother Nana. That started in slavery. But now let's see what happened. What verse? Verse 10. Go ahead. And the child grew, and she brought him into Pharaoh's daughter. Go ahead. And he became her son. And he became a son. Go ahead. And she called his name Moses. Uh huh. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Because well, it's up from the water, sister and brother. That's right. But this is something I, something I always want to point out. Pharaoh is trying to kill all the male babies in Israel. But now what happened is his daughter brings into his house a male Israelite. And I say it all the time, when my grandchildren was little, I couldn't keep them off my knee, even sitting behind the rocks. And people used to complain. They don't know it, and I knew it. And he sat up there with his grand people on his children on his lap. Yeah, that was mine. Granddad is a crazy about grandchildren. This is almost like a built-in thing. We can't help it. <laughs> so I am sure many days. Moses sat on Pharaoh's knee. And he thought he was his grandson. Look at the Egyptian sister and brother. Do you know what Egypt's real name was? Mizraim. But the Greeks saw them, the Mizraimites, they said, these people are black. That's what Egypt means, black. Look it up. Now, if you if Moses was a part of the people that call themselves Jews today, do you think he could have brought his daughter and set this white baby on his knee <laughs> and said, this is your grandson? That wouldn't have worked, wouldn't it? I just want to point that out, sister and brother. So Moses went into Pharaoh's house to get protection. And when he and then Moses finally grew up, and he always knew who he was. He got this picture used to come out. I remember, I remember that picture because it's the only picture that our mother and father went to the movie to see. And it was called the Ten Commandments. So they had Moses there, so you get the maid here. Somebody tell, uh, 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 talk about Moses, say he was a Hebrew. And then Moses find out, they let Moses know that he was a Hebrew. Moses always knew he was a Hebrew Israelite sister and brother because his mother raised him. And I saw that by what he, his behavior. Now, but anyway, Moses had to go down in Pharaoh's house to get protection. Now let's go to Jesus. Let's go into Matthews. Now you can put your marker here because we're coming right back here, sister and brothers. Now let's go into Matthews, the second chapter. Matthews chapter 2. Let's see what happened. Now, remember, all of the males with Jesus, when Moses was born, was killed. Moses just happened to escape, and you know, because uh, that let me know that Aaron well, had, well, had already been born. He was older than Moses. He didn't say kill all the males in Egypt. This guy just said kill all the newborn males in Egypt. So all of the males that was born in Moses' day was killed. That's why the book said when he died, let's talk about Jesus, a generation died. Right. 
to Matthews 2. Matthews 2. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Matthews 2 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, uh -huh. behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. There came three wise men from the east. Wise men. You don't know how many, do you? No, you don't. But keep reading. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? That is, he's born my personal savior. King of the Jews. My guiding light. King of the Jews. King of the Jews. This is what people, see, Jews have been lied on and misrepresented since the day that his name come on the scene. Go ahead and read. For we have seen his star in the east, uh -huh. and I come to worship him. Go ahead. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Because Herod was a straight-up murderer, assistant brother. He murdered everybody that he thought that had claim. You should go and read about Herod the Great. You'll be, sh you'll be shocked. So when Jesus come, and they said he was born king of the Jews, that was just another person that had design on Herod's throne that the Romans had given him. So he was going to kill him too like he killed everybody else. So he was trying to be slick about it. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7 and go ahead. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently uh -huh. what time the star appeared. Go ahead. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. Go ahead. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. <laughs> he, the last thing he had on his mind was worshiping him. That's right. He wanted to kill him. But the Lord weighed in and warned him. Skip down. The verse 11, verse 11, and go ahead. When they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Uh -huh. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, and frankincense, and myrrh. See, all of these, these guys, these wise men, these were the guys that had understanding. And they knew by prophecy that Jesus was supposed to come, and they knew what was going to represent him. But go ahead and read. Verse 12, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now, they were warned. They departed into their own country another way. What happened, sisters and brothers? Keep reading. When they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise. And take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou, and be, and be thou there until I bring thee word. Now, right. now hold on. I'm, I'm going to come back and read this. What verse was that? That was 13. That was 13. We're going to come back and read this because I want to keep this close, okay? So now, what happened was Pharaoh sought to kill Jesus, sister and brother. And the wise men, uh, and, and, and not Pharaoh, uh, uh, Herod. Herod sought to kill Jesus, and the wise men took him out and got him away from that because it was not for him to be killed by Pharaoh. So now, let's Herod. go uh, by Herod. I don't know what's wrong with me. Somebody must be hexing me back there. No, it wasn't. Just keep reading before I leave this. What was the last place it was? Matthew's what? This is Matthew 13. Go ahead and keep reading. Let me just start over. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, uh -huh. Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. Now, so where did Moses go? He went into Pharaoh's house, didn't he? Right. Jesus fled into Pharaoh's country, sister and brother. So he was there. And Lawrence would stay there until I tell you to come back because Herod seemed is trying to kill this boy. What verse is it? That was the end of 13. Go ahead. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night 
and departed into Egypt uh -huh. and was there until the death of Herod. Go ahead. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, out of Egypt have I called my son. And now his firstborn among the nation was Israel. But his firstborn among the people that's going to be born into God's family is Jesus. That's right. So it's, a, it's going to be fulfilled out of Egypt. Have I called my son? Go ahead. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth. Go ahead. And sent forth to slew all the children that were in Bethlehem. Go ahead. And in all the coast thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Now, don't that look like what happened to the, in the days of Moses? Yes, it does. He killed all, they killed all the babies that was born in Moses' time. I'm talking about not the ones that was older. Only thing Herod went, but then Herod wasn't so smart. It took him two years to figure out that them wise men weren't coming back to him. <laughs> so now, when he figured out, he got upset and he killed all of the male babies from two years and old. So now when Moses died, a generation died. That's right. When Jesus died, a generation died. Just like Moses, sister and brother. Now let's go back to Exodus, the second chapter. Exodus chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 11. Exodus chapter 2 and verse 11. Because I think, sister and brother, I'm kind of getting a little woo out because everybody gives everybody my cell number instead of giving the class number. And they called me at home on my cell number all night. But I had to do that. I cut it off at 11 o'clock. So when somebody said, I'm going to talk to Brother Boy, tell him to call the class. He's here every day from Monday to Friday. From 9 to 5. And get his old boy a break, okay? Thank you. Exodus 2, and we're going to start at verse 11. 2 and 11. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown that he went out into it to his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smited in Hebrew, uh -huh. one of his brethren. Now, he, he knew that he was a Hebrew Israelite. So now when he got grown, he wanted to go and look at the condition. Of course, you know, now you, uh, 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 like I say, he is living under the banner of an Egyptian. Everybody thinks he's an Egyptian except for his mama. He know who he was. That's right. But Pharaoh thought he was an Egyptian. But so when he got grown quite naturally, like anybody else, you know, you're curious. Right. I want to go out and. Maybe talk to my own people. I don't have to tell them that they mine, but I just want to mingle with them a little bit. So when he went out there, he saw an Egyptian whooping on an Israelite. What did Moses do? Go ahead and read. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. <laughs> when he said this way, that means he looked around, make sure there wasn't nobody seeing him. <laughs> then he went over there and he killed the Egyptian. But he forgot one thing. He was among Hebrew Israelites. We can't hold water. Keep reading. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strolled together. Uh -huh. And he said to him that did the wrong, Wherefore smite thou thy fellow? Why are you beating up on your brother, man? Go ahead and read. And he said, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? <laughs> Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? Now, you tell the brother to stop whooping on his brother, all of a sudden he's going to say, who made you a ruler over us? What you going to do, man? You going to kill me like you killed that Egyptian? Moses knew he had a problem. What verse? We're in the middle of 14. Go ahead. And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. <laughs> he probably was told by the one that he saved from the Egyptian. That's right. Go ahead and read. Now when Pharaoh heard this thing, 
he sought to slay Moses. Uh -huh. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now, Moses had to run because Pharaoh is going to kill him now. Now it's been revealed that Moses is an Egyptian. He's uh, uh, is a Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite. He's not an Egyptian. I'm going to kill him. He should have went with the Baals that I killed in his age limit. <laughs> so Moses, Pharaoh sought to uh, uh, kill Moses, and Moses fled and went into the land of Midian. Go ahead and read. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. Go ahead. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. So Moses had to run, but then he stood up and helped these girls because the, apparently the, these uh, shepherds would wait till these girls draw the water, then they come up and take over and let their flock drink the water. But then Moses was there. Go ahead and read. When they came to Ruel, their father, he said, how is it that year come so soon today? How come y'all back so soon? You know, because them shepherds would do that to him. And what did they say? Go ahead and read. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of these shepherds uh -huh. and also drew water enough for us and watered the flock. I'm sure Moses didn't tell them that he was an Egyptian. How did they figure he was an Egyptian? Hey, because look. he had Egyptian clothes on and he was black. Right. See, but people don't pay no attention to this. But skip down to verse 21. Verse 21 and go ahead. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses the poor of his daughter. Go ahead. And she bare him a son, and he called his name Gershom. Go ahead. For he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. Uh-huh. And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. Uh-huh. And the children of Israel sighed by the reason of the bondage. Go ahead. And they cried. And their cry came up unto God by the reason of the bondage. So now, that child of slavery had gotten real bad on the, on the Egyptian sister and brother. On the, on, the, uh, on the Israelites, brother. I don't know what's wrong with me. Good grief. This is a bad day. Maybe I should rewind it. But anyway, it had gotten real bad on the Israelites, sister and brother. And they cried and cried, even though God, uh, uh, so God, Heard they cry. So they hadn't been sinners. They weren't under the curse at this time. So God heard they cry. At least, let's see what happened. Let's go into Exodus, the third chapter. Exodus chapter 3. And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Exodus 3 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, uh -huh. the priest of Midian. Go ahead. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. That's, that's also called Sinai. Go ahead and read. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire. Go ahead. And the bush was not consumed. Uh -huh. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. Now, that is a great sight. You see a tree that's burning and ain't nothing, it's not being consumed. It's just burning. You, oh, look, I'm going to see what's going on here. And what happened? Go ahead. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Go ahead. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Go ahead. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place wherein thou standest is holy ground. So he told him, you stand on holy ground. But then he had an errand for Moses. And let's see what he said to Moses. Skip down to verse 10 and read it. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Go ahead. That thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. He said, now, he's going to send Moses to Pharaoh, sister and brother, because he wanted to bring his children out of Egypt. So let's see what happened. Let's go into Exodus, the fourth chapter. Exodus, the fourth chapter. Let's start reading that verse 10, and we're going to skip. 4 and 10. Exodus 4 and 10. Okay, read it. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore, 
knowest this thou hast spoken unto thy servant, for I am slow of speech and of a slow tongue. Now Moses didn't want to do that. Look, Lord, I'm not eloquent. I ain't no good talker. I'm one of them slow talkers. Oh, well, oh, well, oh. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have something to say. When the Lord said, I'm going to send you back to Egypt to deliver my people. Most people that are truly serving the God don't want to be no serving the God. You don't want to be no preaching, no teaching, or nothing. Because you don't want that to get in your way. I know I was like that. But skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. The anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Because he had taken to Moses. Uh, if you read it on your own, Moses tried, I can't do this and I can't do that. He turned his hand white. He did a lot of stuff. And Moses still was trying to get out of it. So God got mad at Moses. He said, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. Go ahead and read. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? Go ahead. And I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. Uh -huh. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. He said, look, don't you know, don't you know Aaron your, the Levite is your brother? He speaks well. So I got him meeting you right now. God was ahead of Moses. He knew that Moses wasn't one of them slow sparkers, had a, a speech problem. People can't believe that Moses had a speech problem. He said it, didn't he? And God just co-signed co it because he sent him Aaron, his brother, his older brother, which is a well speaker. Spoke well. But go ahead and read. Verse 15. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. Uh -huh. And I will be with thy mouth go ahead. and with his mouth. Uh -huh. And will teach you what ye shall do. So look, I'm going to tell you what to say and you tell it to Aaron. And Aaron going to go and tell the people because he's a good orator. God had already had that uh, 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 desire because God know every servant that he sent to do something. He know your strengths and he know your weaknesses. So what he do is he compensate for your weaknesses. And Aaron was a compensation for Moses' weakness, speech weakness. Skip now to verse 19 and let's see what happened there. Verse 19. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and Midian, uh -huh. Go, return it to Egypt, for all the men are dead which sought thy life. Now, pay attention to this. And the Lord said unto Moses and Midian, Return unto Israel. Because all that seek... Egypt. To, uh, return to Egypt, brother. All that seek your life is dead. Return to Egypt. The plan that the Pharaoh is trying to kill you, he is dead. Now let's see what he said in Jesus' case. Now let's go back to Matthew, the second chapter. Matthew chapter 2. I'm not going to put this on old age. Uh-uh. Because I listen to Wes talking. He don't ever slip. He tell you precisely what you, he wants you to hear. <laughs> Finally find somebody here that's a little older than me. Matthews 2, and we're going to start reading at verse 19. Matthews 2 and 19. Matthews 2 and verse 19. Okay, read it. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Now that fair rod that sought Jesus' life, he died. The Lord killed him with an ugly death, but we ain't gonna, that's another lesson. Go ahead and read. Saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother uh -huh. and go into the land of Israel. Go ahead. For they are dead which sought the young child's life. Don't that sound familiar? Lord told Moses to go back to Egypt. Well, they all are dead that seek your life. Then he told Joseph, take this young child back to Israel. Well, they are dead that seek his life. You right. notice how this thing is parallel in Sister and Mother? Mm-hmm. Moses had to go into Egypt, into Pharaoh's house to hide. Jesus had to go into Pharaoh's country to hide. You know what black history, 
Now, a week I have a little picture to show y'all, but I'm going to say that for then. To let you know that it could not be mistaken. Now, let's go back to Exodus, the seventh chapter. And let's see what happened now. Because Moses was sent back to Egypt, and let's see what he did while he was in Egypt. Exodus chapter 7. This is just a comparison. So all you have to do is go into the book and find out who did these things, and then you will know that you done ran into Jesus, the one that's like Moses. That's why you're going to raise up a prophet like unto me. From among your brethren. That means he had to be an Israelite. He couldn't come right. as no other person. Right. Seven and one. Seven and one. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh. Uh -huh. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. <laughs> Isn't that something? I have made you a God with your own prophet, which is Aaron. Okay? Since you can't speak, he can. Go ahead and read. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, uh -huh. that he send the children of Israel out of his land. Yeah, because the Lord wouldn't send a man that couldn't hardly talk. Not, not look here, uh, uh, Pharaoh. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Lord, yeah. Uh-uh, he ain't going to do that. He going to want somebody that's eloquent. Look here, Pharaoh. Thus said the Lord. So the Lord fixed this thing, okay? Go ahead and read. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart. And I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. This people don't understand. When you do something to the Lord, he's going to get you. Pharaoh and the Egyptians had really desecrated Israel. You didn't work them for nothing. You didn't beat them. You didn't kill them. Now you didn't kill all the male babies in a generation. You think that God going to let you get away with that? Uh-uh. He said, I want you to go talk to him, but I'm going to harden his heart. Go ahead and read. And multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Go ahead. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt. Now, that's what he wanted to do. Right. I want to get these people for what they did to my people. That's why I tell people all the time, don't be running around trying to fight the Lord's battle. The Lord is the one that put us in captivity, and the Lord's going to deal with the ones that mistreated us in captivity because he said, I was just a little displeased with my people, but you have fathered the affliction. You've got your problem. I want you to slap him around a little bit. I didn't want you to knock him down and stomp on him and kick his teeth in. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hands upon Egypt. This is the Lord talking here. Right. He ain't going to let him listen. Go ahead and read. And bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. by great judgments. Now, he said, I'm going to do it. That great judgment, that means he's going to do some big damage. Go ahead and read. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. Go ahead. When I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt uh -huh. and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So then the Egyptians are going to know that he is the Lord. That's like when the Lord re recover us, the world is going to know that we are the real Hebrew Israelite. You don't have to run around, look at me, look at me. The world is going to know. Skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuseth to let the people go. Go ahead. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out into the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come. And the rod which was turned to a serpent shall thou take in thine hand. And thou shalt say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me unto thee, saying, Go ahead. Let my people go. Now, the Moses know he ain't going to let him go, because God told him he ain't going to let him go. But he said, the Lord God of the Hebrews said, let my people go. Go ahead and read. That they may serve me in the wilderness. Uh -huh. And behold, hitherto thou wouldest not hear. Thus saith the Lord, and this thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Go ahead. Behold, I will smite with the rod that is in mine hand upon the waters 
which are in the river, uh -huh. and they shall be turned to blood. Go ahead. Now, they're going to be turned to blood. He told them that he's going to do this. The Lord didn't do something, and you didn't know it. He let Pharaoh know what he's going to do because he had told Moses, and Moses told Aaron. And he said, and I'm going to turn the river to blood. Skip down to verse 20, and let's see what happens. Go ahead. And Moses and Aaron did so as the Lord commanded. Uh -huh. And he lifted up the rod. And he smote the waters that were in the river Go ahead. in the sight of Pharaoh, uh -huh. in the sight of his servants. And all the waters that were in the river were turned to blood. And they're standing right there. He put that water, rod in that river, and it turned to blood. Go ahead and read. And the fish that was in the river died, and the river stank. And the Egyptians could not drink of the water of the river, and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. So the Egyptians, these are the false prophets in this case. The, the magicians, they go, look, he ain't did nothing. We can do that too. Whether we're the false, you know, uh, uh, vision. But still the water was blood. Right. But because the Egyptians said we can do the same thing, it's hard and hard again. I ain't letting y'all go nowhere. Because the Egyptian pulled that off. What, did you finish that? Yes, I did. Was that verse 22? Yeah. Now let's see what happened. We're going to look at the, that was the first plague. He turned the water to blood. I want you to keep a number because these make a difference. In the end of this, close to the end of this lesson. Now let's go into Exodus, the eighth chapter. Now, it's hard and hard, even though the water is blue. Let's see what happened. Eight and one. Go ahead and read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go unto Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Go ahead. Let my people go, uh -huh. that they may serve me. Go ahead. And if they, thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all thy borders with frogs. Ooh, that would scare me, because that's <laughs> the only thing on this planet that I'm afraid of. Oh, I shouldn't have told y'all that. But go ahead and read. And the river shall bring forth frogs abundantly, uh -huh. which shall go up and come into thine house. Go ahead. And into thy, and into thy bed chamber, uh -huh. and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, uh -huh. and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. Boy, that is really something, man. Woo. You open your thing, and you, you got bullfrogs and toads all over your house. You can open up your stove to cook. You got frogs sitting in there looking at you. <laughs> Pull back the cover on your bed. Frogs laying up in there looking at you. Boy, that is a frightening thing. Skip down to verse 6 and let's see what happened. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. That was the second plague. This was on everybody, Israel and everybody. Now, that's the second plague, sisters and brothers. Now, let's skip now to verse 8 and read it. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me. Boy, that got his attention, didn't it? That's right. Go ahead and read. And from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Now, he was scared. He said, look, why don't you go pray to the Lord and get rid of these frogs. I'm going to let you all go. Skip down to verse 13 and let's, let's see what happened. So there was a second plague. Go ahead. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. Uh -huh. And they gathered them together upon heaps, and the land stank. I guess so. All them dead frogs, and they started to rot on you. Go ahead and read. But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. See, now, ain't no way you could hold out <laughs> with all this happening unless the Lord didn't put one of them hexes on you. He said, well, I ain't going to let them go. I ain't going to let them. I'm gonna make his, I ain't going to let him let you all go. He going to want them, but I'm not going to let him. Go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 16. Uh-huh. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, 
Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, uh -huh. that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. I guess, boy, when dust turned to lice, you're in Ooh. trouble, ain't you? I'm telling you. I mean, he laid a whipping on Egypt. Go ahead and read. And they did so. But Aaron stretched out his hand upon it, his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth. Uh -huh. And it became lice in man and in beast, all the dust of the land, became lice throughout all the, all the land of Egypt. Now, that's the third plague that he brought on them, sisters and brothers. But think about it. Even now, we done took a bath. We walk a little bit and we wipe a, good, a little bit with a white cloth. We still see some dust. <laughs> that means when he turned them dust, that dust of lice, that was the dust that's already on your skin, eating every inch of your body. I just want you to feel what the Lord was doing to the Egyptian sisters and Woo. brothers. Now skip down to verse 19. That was the third plague. Verse 19. And go ahead. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. Now, they couldn't do that. <laughs> go ahead and read. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. Now, the last people that he wanted, his counselor to tell him this is from God. So his heart was hard. Lord made him, he got mad. They ain't letting him go nowhere. Skip down to verse 14, uh, 24. Verse 24. And read it. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. Boy, that has to be bad, don't it? Brought flies into the house. Hit you with life, but flies? One fly kills me. <laughs> so now, how many plagues we got here? Four. Uh-huh. So now, the Lord's going to do something here. Because these flies are some real problems, sisters and brothers. Uh, let's skip, let's go, keep reading, verse 25. 25. Go ahead. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. And Moses said. Now he told him, go and sacrifice to your God in the land. Skip down. Was that the 24? That was 25. Uh, to, to 30, go ahead and read. And Moses said, it is not meat so to do. And we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Uh -huh. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of, of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? See, the Egyptians didn't like uh, shepherds anyway. So now we get to sacrifice among the Egyptians, they're going to stone us. Go ahead. We will go three days' journey into the wilderness uh -huh. and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us. Now... And we're going to go and sacrifice if he had commanded us. Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh said, I will let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, only ye shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. Now, and I'm going to let you go, but I don't want you to go very far. Now, how far we got? What verse was that? That was the end of 28. Now, let's start at verse 30 and continue. Go ahead. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarm of flies from Pharaoh. Go ahead. From his servants and from his people. There remained not one. And Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. So he hardened his heart again. So the Lord had brought all these plagues up on Egypt. How many plagues did he bring up on Egypt at that time? Seven. We can, let, let's look at them first now. The first one was blood. That was the plague. The second one was frogs. The third one was lice. Okay? But what happened was, I didn't read it, the Lord made a difference between his people and the Egyptians, okay? And let's go and look at this. Let's go into Exodus the ninth chapter. Exodus chapter 9, and we're going to start reading that verse 1. Exodus 9 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus said the Lord God of the 
Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. Go ahead. For thou refuse and let them go and will hold them still. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field. Go ahead. Upon the horses, upon, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. Go ahead. There shall be a very grievous moraine, and the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. He said, but I'm going to make a difference now. I'm going to separate them. Because he didn't hit everybody. Actually, with, that, with three, somewhere he had made a difference already. He hit him with three. So the fourth is really is when he started to uh, 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 separate Israel from Egypt. So, okay, he said, I'm going to make a difference between them now, and I'm going to separate them. Now, skip now. Let's keep reading in the verse 7. Go ahead verse now. Verse 5. Uh, verse uh, 5, brother. Go ahead. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. Go ahead. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. Uh -huh. And all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Look, he has separated Israel from the Egyptians. He really has separated them uh, 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 after the swarm of, after the swarm, uh, uh, before, after the swarm of flies. So that means this was the second plague now that he didn't drop on Egypt that Israel didn't suffer because he separated them. We got to make sure that we understand that. What verse are we now? That was the end of 6. Okay, so at the end of 6. Now he didn't separate them from them. Now he, this is his second plague. But verse 7, go ahead. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. Go ahead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and unto Aaron, Take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh. Go ahead. And it shall come, and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt, and shall be a boar breaking forth with blames upon man and upon beasts all throughout of, all the land of Egypt. Now, all of a sudden, everybody broke out with boars. That was the uh, sixth plague, but there was a third one for, e for Israel. Egypt. That was the sixth plague. That was the, that was the uh, uh, no, this is the separation. The third one from Israel, because you start to count all over again. You got... Three, he brought on all Egypt. Then he separated Israel from Egypt. Then he brought one, which was, uh, uh, which was four, and one is the same thing, the flies. And then we get out here to verse 10. This was the sixth plague, but the third one that he had separated Israel from. Israel didn't feel this plague, sisters and brothers. Right, right, right. The third one. Okay, what right. verse are we? That was the end of nine. Okay, go ahead. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses sprinkled it toward heaven, and it became a boar breaking forth with blades upon man and upon beast. Now, he threw that up. Now, this is the next one coming up. That was the third one for Israel. When they broke out in boars, everybody started, you know, you had boars before. How would you like them all over your body? That's where it was, because he, he did that out of the dust, too, didn't he? Uh, with right. the ashes. Ashes, right. Now, verse 11, go ahead. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils. Well, that was on them, too. Go ahead and read. For the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. Go ahead. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord has spoken it to Moses. So now he get mad because he was in boils now. So I ain't going to let y'all go nowhere. <laughs> Boy, this guy was really getting out of the pocket, wasn't he? That's right. What verse was it? That was the end of 12. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and go here. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as had not been in Egypt, since the foundation thereof, even until now. Uh-huh. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle, 
and all that thou hast in the field. Go ahead. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hell shall come down upon them and they shall die. Nah, he's going to bring this. If you don't listen, let them go, I'm going to bring hell on you. They didn't listen, as usual. What verse was it? That was the end of 19. Skip down to verse 22 and go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hell in all the land of Egypt upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. So now he brought hell down on him. And his hell was the fourth plague. Keep, uh, skip down to, uh, uh, what was that, 19? That was 22. 22, skip down to verse 35. 25. Uh, was it 35? 25. 25, go ahead, because I'm trying to get through this. Verse 25, and go ahead. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. Uh -huh. And the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Now, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Broke up everything. Fourth plague. Now let's go and skip down to verse 35. Verse 35 and go ahead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, go ahead. as the Lord had spoken by Moses. So now the Lord did that and he hardened Pharaoh's heart. He told him, y'all ain't going nowhere. No. How many plagues was that we just got through counting? That was the fourth one, wasn't it? Now let's go into Exodus, the 10th chapter. Exodus chapter 10. And we're going to start reading at verse 3, 10 and 3, because, Her Her because Pharaoh wouldn't let him go. Go ahead and read. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, uh -huh. How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Go ahead. Let my people go, uh -huh. that they may serve me. Go ahead. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow... Will I bring the locusts into thy coast? So he's, he, he's using the elements on him, isn't it? Yes, sir. Tomorrow I will bring the locusts upon y'all. Didn't listen. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12. And go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt. That verse verse 12. 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt uh -huh. and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hell has left. Boy, he does something to kill your crop with hell. Now you're going to let the locusts finish them off. Go ahead and read. And Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind upon the land all that day uh -huh. and, and, and all that night. Go ahead. And, it, and when it was morning, the east wind brought the locusts. So the Lord brought all them locusts upon them and dropped them right down there on Egypt. Go ahead and read. And the locusts went up over the, all the land of Egypt and rested in the, all the coast of Egypt. Go ahead. Very grievous were they. Uh -huh. Before them were, there, were no such locusts as they neither after them shall be such. Go ahead. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened. You couldn't even walk without stepping on locusts. Go ahead and read. And they did eat every herb of the land and all the fruit of the trees which the hell had left. Go ahead. And there remained not any green thing in the trees or in the herbs of the field through all the land of Egypt. Now, that was the eighth one, but it was the fifth one that Israel was separated from him. Locusts come up and ate up everything. Go ahead and read. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste. Uh -huh. And he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now see, he knew that he was doing wrong, but the Lord wouldn't let him up. You know why? Because the Lord said, I want to lay my hand on Egypt because they have done a hard thing and beat up my people and destroyed my people, kill my baby. No, no, y'all got to pay. Now, he didn't repent it. He didn't repent it over and over, but he changed his mind. Go ahead and read. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my, my sin only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. Now, ain't that something? You got the, the master begging the servant. 
<laughs> if you just take it away, just this time. So the locust was the fifth one. Now let's go to verse 19. Skip down to 19 and continue. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts uh -huh. and cast them into the Red Sea. Go ahead. There remained not one locust in all the coast of e Egypt. Now the Lord took them away and cleaned out all the locusts. Didn't leave one. Only the Lord can be that thorough. Go ahead and read. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart uh -huh. so that he would not let the children of Israel go. He said, look, I got some more to collect off you, mister. Right. I ain't letting you up that easy. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt. Go ahead. Even darkness which may be felt. That is real dark, ain't it? Woo. That means you can't move if you can feel it. Go ahead and read. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Uh-huh. They saw not one another, Neither rose any from his place for three days. You, you couldn't even look over and look at your old lady. <laughs> it was that dark. He said they saw not one another. And they were there for three days. Go ahead. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Now, so that was in the land of Goshen. That's right. They had light. Pharaoh knew that. So what plague, plague was that? That was the sixth plague. Now to go and skip down to verse 24. Uh, in fact, read right on into verse 24. Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Uh -huh. Let your little ones also go with you. Go ahead. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings that we may sacrifice until the Lord our God. Go ahead. Our cattle also shall go with us. Uh-huh. There shall not a hoof be left behind. That Moses told him big yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take them all, and there ain't going to be a hoof left behind. <laughs> I like to see the expression on his face when he said that. <laughs> I guess he got off into his flesh for a minute there, didn't he? he did. Go ahead and read. For there must we take to serve the Lord our God. Uh-huh. We know not what would... We know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. Go ahead. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, uh -huh. and he would not let them go. That Pharaoh got mad now because he didn't go to Moses and talk up at it to him. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me. You better get out my face. Go ahead. Take heed to thyself. You better watch your mouth. Go ahead. See my face no more. Don't see my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face. Thou shalt die. For the day you get in my face again, mister, that's the day you're going to die. Because <laughs> he didn't like Moses talking to him that way. No, didn't. Go ahead and read. And Moses says, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. You said it, mister. <laughs> I ain't going to see your face no more. So that was the sixth plague when they hit him with that darkness, sisters and brothers. So now you got one more left. Let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter. That was... Exodus chapter 12, and we're going to start it at verse 1, Exodus 12 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Go ahead. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh -huh. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Go ahead. And if the household be too little... Now that's enough. The, according to the house. Let's skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. So this lamb really represents Jesus. That's right. A male of the first year, he had to be perfect. Go ahead and read. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goat. Go ahead. And ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month, uh -huh. and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now, you're going to keep it up, and you're going to kill it in the evening. Go ahead and read. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Uh -huh. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Now, you're going to take the blood and put it over your doorpost. 
Why do you have to put the blood over your doorpost and the signpost? Because the Lord is going to do something here. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. Well, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, uh -huh. both man and beast. Go ahead. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to kill the firstborn of everything. Look, Egypt killed the Lord's son. So God, God said, well, I'm going to do what? I'm going to kill the firstborn of yours. Not only you, but your cows and your oxen and everything else, too. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon huh? the houses where ye are. Go ahead. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Now, the blood shall be a token unto you. You know what that token is? The token of your faith. Right. That means when you saw that, when you put that blood over your doorpost, you believed that God was going to come through and kill the firstborn. If you didn't believe it, you wouldn't have put it over your doorpost. People think faith started with Matthew. No. Faith has always been around. That's right. So when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. That's what the word Passover came from. What verse was that? This is middle of 13. Go ahead. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now, if the Jew Egyptian heard that and would have got some blood and put it over their doorpost, the Lord wouldn't have smoked them either. Some of them probably did hear it and didn't believe. That's right. Because he said it was not one. He killed one in every house. Every house, sisters and brothers. Nothing escaped. Skip down to verse 29. And go ahead. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, Go ahead. from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne until the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, Go ahead. and all the firstborn of cattle. Uh -huh. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt, Go ahead. for there was not a house where there was not one dead. I mean, he killed them all over. But read the other verse. Go ahead and read. Verse, and it, uh, verse 31. Uh, 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 that was, that, that, was a, that was a seventh plague, wasn't it? And this is the one that sprung Israel. It was the tenth plague, but it was the seventh one that Israel was separated from the Egyptian. Firstborn in Egypt, in Egypt, Israel didn't die. But the firstborn in Egypt and everybody else and every beast of the field died. That was the seventh plague, sisters and brothers. And that's what sprung Israel. Verse 31, go ahead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, go ahead. both ye and the children of Israel, uh -huh. and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Now I want you to rise and go. He didn't, he got, all of a sudden, he wasn't so cocked in, was he? <laughs> no. <laughs> serve the Lord as you said, go ahead. Also, take your flocks and your herds. Every hoof, go ahead. <laughs> As you have said, uh -huh. and be gone. Go ahead. Bless me also. <laughs> he wanted, he wanted, he knew who he was dealing with now. Because the Lord said, then the Egyptians gonna know that I am the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the Egyptians were urging upon the people Go ahead. that they might send them out of the land in haste. Uh -huh. For they said, We be all dead men. So all the Egyptians wanted to know. That's not what I know when the Lord gets ready to bring his people from all over the world. He's going he to put a, a condition on this world, and they're going to want to take you back. We got a lesson to show you that, sisters and brothers. Let's skip down to verse 51 and read it. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. So that's the seventh plague. When the Lord killed the firstborn, then he brought all of the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, sister and brother. And let's see, what did he take them to? Let's go into 15, and we're going to read Exodus, the 15th chapter, and we're going to read verse 22. Exodus 15 and verse 22. Did they go directly to the land? And let's see where they went. Verse 22. Exodus 15 and 22. Read it. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea 
And they went out into the wilderness of Shur. Uh -huh. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So now when Moses come through the Red Sea, he didn't, they didn't go directly to the land. They went into the wilderness. And they was in the wilderness 40, 40 years, sisters and brothers. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and look and see what Jesus is going to do to the world before he recover Israel from bondage. There's got to be something on the same order because he said, I'm going to raise up one from among your brethren like unto you. Now, so far, we've seen that happen. That's right. We see Jesus, Moses, born and had to run and all the males in his time was killed. We see Jesus born and his parents had to run and all the males in his time was killed. Then the Lord turned around when he killed Egypt, told, told Moses, all that seek, go back to uh, Egypt because all that seek your life is dead. Then he told Joseph, go back to Israel because all that seek your life is dead. We on the same order here. So now here comes Jesus. Now we see Moses came and he took down Egypt and delivered Israel and took them to the wilderness. Let's see what's going to happen when Jesus come. Revelation, the fifth chapter now. Revelation chapter five. I should have warned y'all about this lesson. I think I did the last time I did it. What, about three years ago? <laughs> Revelation five and verse one. Revelation five and one. Because I just, I want to make sure that you see the parallel. So you won't have, you won't have any doubt in your mind that Jesus is the one that the Lord spoke about, starting with Moses, by all his prophets. 51 and 1, go ahead. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside, now this sealed the with seven seals. Now, this is the fathers now, sealed with seven seals. Now, nobody could deal with this book. Skip down and read verse 5, verse 5 and read it. And one of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So that book that the father had in his hand, sealed with seven seals, he said, could no man uh, uh, break loose them seals? Could nobody in earth or on earth? And so John started to cry. He said, don't cry. You got the lion of the tribe of Judah. He can open the seal. Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Jesus, sisters and brothers. He can open the seal. And let's see what happened. Let's go in the sixth chapter of Revelation and start at verse 1. Let's see what happened when he opened the seal. Six and one. Go ahead. And I saw in the Lamb open one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, uh -huh. one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Go ahead. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, uh -huh. and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Look, who is this one on the white horse? That's the Pope of Rome, sister and brother. That's why people tell me we're in the seals. No, you cannot be in the seal. Because the first thing that has to happen is the people that call themselves Jews have got to build a temple over there. That's right. And once they till the, build a temple, then Pope going to leave from Rome and the European Union which is the beast in the 17th chapter and 13th chapter of Revelation with seven heads and ten horns, they go going to install him in that temple. And that's when he's going to start his trek. And you're looking at it right now. Because he is already started in Europe. He's, he's going to first thing on the agenda is to make so Sunday now become what? The Sabbath day. And Monday is going to be the first day of the week. It's already started in Europe, sister and brother but the world ain't paying no attention to it. He gonna try to put this on all and, and other stuff too, like going to heaven and all that stuff. Go ahead, the next verse. Verse three. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, uh -huh. come and see. Go ahead. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth, and now, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So when you go to conquer, people ain't going to lie down real easy, so that's going to start a war. That's the first one that's going to come up on the whole world. Go ahead and read. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, 
Come and see. Go ahead. And I beheld and lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. Go ahead. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny. Uh -huh. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. That's famine now. Once you have a war, what's happening in all wars? Famine sets in. Because it cuts off all supplies and you can't and, and you can't go long and raise your crops or nothing. You're in war now. Famine. That's the second plague. Go ahead and read. Verse 7. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. Go ahead. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that said on him was death, and hell followed with him. Go ahead. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death, and with beast of the earth. Now we have other lessons. We will show you that these people will have a fourth part of the earth. We're going to be ruling. Now once they take over, that's the European Union now, with the Pope behind them, they're going to take over, and they're going to be, they can kill who they want to kill, any time they want to kill, in any fashion that they want to kill. And that is the third Please. But now, the Lord is going to intervene. What verse was that, verse 8? Yes. Okay, so let's skip down to verse 12, and let's see what happened. Verse 12, because now Western Europe have taken over a full part of the earth, and they're going to be killing who they want to kill, let, let live who they want to live. That's the time when you're going to have to receive a mark that's called a mark of the beast. And if you don't have that mark, you ain't going to be able to buy or sell. I don't care how much money you got. And they told you where the mark is going to be. It's going to be in your forehead and in your right hand. And I keep telling people all the time, they are practicing that right now on Ash Wednesday. If you didn't know that, pay attention on Ash Wednesday. You're going to see all these people walking around with dirty foreheads and dirty hands. <laughs> Getting you ready. For a time that's called the Great Tribulation. Getting you ready for the mark of the beast. So when you get that, you are going to have a problem. But now, what puts an end in the time that's going to be, at that time, is going to be called the Great Tribulation too. So what's going to end it? Verse 12, read it. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Go ahead. And the sun became black as south that cloth of hair. Go ahead. And the moon became his blood. Now people think that Jesus is going to be a secret when he comes. No, no. This is going to happen. Go ahead and read. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth. Go ahead. Even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Go ahead. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. Uh-huh. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. So the people don't understand that heaven departed like a scroll. You got three heavens, sisters and brother. We own one now. The third heaven is from an inch off the ground until the edge of some water on the other side of the moon, stars, and the planets. So that heaven roll back like a scroll, a big body of water going to roll back, sisters and brothers. Then you're going to be able to see the Lord. Everybody is. Most people say, well, I can't see that far. The book says you're going to see him. So I'm rolling with the book. And I'm going to show you that they're going to see him. Go ahead and read. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. Go ahead. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Then, I tell you that they're going to be able to see him. Isn't that correct? Otherwise, they wouldn't be saying, running for, calling from the rocks in the mouth and to fall on them and hide them from the wrath of the Lamb. You ain't never heard that in your church. Jesus love everybody. <laughs> so where did this wrath come from? Out of the book. Right. Hide us from the wrath of the Lamb. So now, how many plagues he done brought on them? Three. But now, the next plague he going to bring 
and he is going to orchestrate every one of them like he did with Moses. Let's go into Revelation, the seventh chapter, and see what happened now. Those three plagues that come on the whole earth, war, famine, and nothing but death and destruction. But the Lord rolled back. Now, he's getting ready to come, but let's see what he's going to do before he come. Revelation 7 and 1. Go ahead and read. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Go ahead. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Go ahead. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. Now this is the separation here. Just like the Lord separated Israel and Egypt from the rest of the Egyptian, God is going to separate Israel from the rest of the world. Especially them that's in that area, the fourth part that he is in, he's going to seal them. Because he said, you done gone through the trouble, now I'm going to fix it so you ain't going to suffer nothing else. Go ahead and read. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Now, people say, that's, that's all I'm going to be saved now, sisters and brothers. These are people that are in that area, that fourth part of the earth. He have affected the whole earth, but if you was there, you was in trouble. So he sealed 144,000 of Israel that got caught up in it. Skip down to verse 9 and read that. After this, I beheld. And lo, a great multitude, Go ahead. which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now, a number that no man could number, he sealed them too, along with the 144,000. People are always talking about the 144,000, but they never mention these people. So who are these people? Skip down to verse 13, verse 13, and go ahead. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? Uh -huh. And whence came they? Go ahead. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. These are they that came out of great tribulation. They survived it, because there's going to be a time that you ain't never seen before. These are they that survived great tribulation. Go ahead and read. And they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This term it is, these people was converted during the great tribulation. That's right. These people didn't believe until the Lord brought pressure upon them and destruction upon them by the hand of the one they think that, that they think is the holiest man on the planet. Go ahead and read. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. Go ahead. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. Now, people think that, well, they must be in the first resurrection. No, they are not in the first resurrection. And the throne of God, the throne of Jesus, is going to be on this earth because he's going to sit on David's throne. They're not going to be going to heaven. That means that they just survived, and they're going to be around Jesus like the rest of the world is going to be. But go ahead and read. They shall hunger no more. They shall hunger no more. Neither thirst anymore, uh -huh. neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Now you can find these same people are told, uh, Isaiah in Isaiah 49 and 10. They tell you about the same people. You can go on your own time and read it. These are flesh and blood people, Israelites and other people, that the Lord sealed because they turned to him during this great tribulation. Go ahead and read. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them uh -huh. and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. Go ahead. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now, these people was converted, but the reason they're not immortal because he said he's going to lead them unto living waters. If they was immortal, he didn't have to lead them to living waters. They would be immortal already and live forever. So now, but these people God sealed, sisters and brothers. He sealed, and the last, seven last plague are not going to fall on them. Let's go into Revelations. 
the seventh chapter, eight chapter, eight, uh, eight chapter Revelation 8 chapter, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Revelation 8 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. Go ahead. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Why seven angels? Why seven trumpets? Because he's going to bring ten, and just like it was in Egypt, when he separated Israel, then he brought seven plagues upon the rest of Egypt. So he, they stood there with seven uh, 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 trumpets. Now these trumpets don't do the harm. These trumpets announces the harm that's going to come on this earth. Skip down to verse 6 and read it. And the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And they got ready to sound. And every one of these trumpets, when they sound, sisters and brothers, the Lord is going to hurt this earth. So they prepared themselves to sound. And these trumpets, like I said, they announces the destruction that's going to come on this earth. Go to Revelation 15 chapter. Because the Lord, when he blow one of these trumpets, something is going to happen on this earth. And ain't nobody ready for this. And everybody's going to be here. Ain't nobody going to, will, nobody will have gone anywhere. They're going to all be here. Even the people in the first resurrection. That's going to be in the first resurrection. They will all be here. Because the first resurrection can't start until Jesus started his descent. That let me know these people that were sealed too could not be raised or changed until the Lord started his descent. 15 and 1, read it. And I saw another sign in heaven, uh -huh. great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. Now, one, one of those plagues that, that the Lord brought on Egypt, there was this wrath, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Seven, after he had separated Israel, he had seven more that he poured out on Egypt. So these guys had uh, uh, seven vials of wrath. Skip down. Verse 6, and go ahead. And the seven angels came out of the temple, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. Go ahead. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vows full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. See now, so the Lord is going to do the same thing to the earth, sisters and brothers, that Moses did to Egypt. The exact same thing. And when that seven one is, is, is poured out, it's going to have the exact same results. He's going to spring Israel and the rest of the world out of the hands of the beast and the false prophet. Let's go into Revelation 16 chapter. Go start in verse 1, 16 and 1. Go ahead. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, uh -huh. Go your ways and pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. Go ahead. And the first went and poured out his vow upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. That's why you better not get that mark of the beast. The Lord going to deal with you. Go ahead and read. And upon them which worshipped his image. Go ahead. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. Go ahead. And it became as the blood of a dead man. Uh -huh. And every living soul died in the sea. Didn't that happen in Egypt? Go ahead. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. That's the same thing. He is putting the hurt on this earth. But the angels blow, other angels bring the wrath of God upon this earth. See, all this damage going to happen on this earth, and somebody tell you you're going to be raptured off and ain't nothing going to happen. Boy, do you have a rude awakening coming. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, uh -huh. and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. That's the kind of heat you ain't never felt. I'm telling it's just you. like you're going to be exposed directly to the sun. Ooh. And he's going to scorch through the, uh, everybody except the mark, people that had a mark. This is talking about in the area here. They're going to be scorched with fervent heat. Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Go ahead. And his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. Wait a minute. Did that happen in Egypt? Yes, sir. 
So we're going to get to the point where you can't turn over in the bed and see your old lady. It's going to be that dark, sisters and brothers. Except for us, we're going to be in the wilderness. <laughs> get down to verse 12. See, because we, we know what, how the story is going to end. That's right. We can do a little inside trade. That's right. Verse 12, and go ahead. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Uh -huh. And the water thereof was dried up. Go ahead. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Don't you know that is what this, you, this, this, this war in Ukraine is all about? Because the Ukraine is east of Turkey. And everybody east of Turkey are going to be under the banner of Russia. See, the world don't know that. And Russia's putting their house in order in America, and everybody else is interfering in it. Yep, yep. But they're going to prevail because prophets have told you. Yep. Because the Euphrates River runs right through Turkey. Everybody, the other lesson we'll show you, that everybody's on the other side of Euphrates Turkey, uh, uh, River, which is Turkey, which is uh, run through Turkey, they belong to the Russians. However honorable we think we are and how much good we think we're doing, they're going to lose this one. Right. What verse? That was the end of 12. Go ahead. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon uh -huh. and out of the mouth of the beast Go ahead. and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Uh -huh. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. This is World War III. The Bible called it the War of Armageddon. Because all nations are going to be in on this fight. Ain't nobody going to be out of it. It's just going to be spearheaded by Western Europe, sister and brother. But the battle is the Lord's battle, because the Lord said he's going to bring them down into this uh, Valley of Megiddo, which is also called the Valley of Decision, because he is going, it's going to be decided then and now whether man is going to run this world or God is going to run this world. No, God ain't going to steal you off this earth. He's going to come and take it down. He desired to be here. You hang around here long enough, you're going to get to read that with your own eyes. Can't teach you everything in one day. But go ahead and read. What verse? Verse 15. Go ahead. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, uh -huh. lest he walk naked and they see his shame. That's when the Lord is coming. That's when the Lord's going to come then. Because if he don't come then, like he said in Matthew, the 24th chapter, there will be no flesh saved. The weapons are too big. Everybody's going to push that nuclear button, and everybody, and when it go down, won't be nobody left. The Lord's saying, ain't going to let that happen. So he's going to come. He's going to gather them in one place, and he's going to set a list. Go ahead and read. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. That's the battle of Megiddo. Some of you have heard rumor of it, but the Lord Jesus is going to bring this to pass. He is. Go ahead and read. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. So when that seventh angel, the seventh angel poured out his plague, that means the seventh trumpet is blown. And just like it was with the other, it announces a plague. This time, it announces the coming of Jesus. Because he's going to sit there, and he is going to wreak havoc on this whole earth while he's sitting there on his throne in heaven at the right hand of the Father. But the world, world don't know that. But he's going to be dealing with his earth, sisters and brothers. So now, when that seventh trumpet is blown, the seventh plague is pouring out. Let's see what's going to happen. Let's go to Revelation 11 chapter. Revelation chapter 11. That's why I don't nobody go into Revelation 11 chapter because they don't want to look at all this ugly that the Lord's going to bring on this earth. <laughs> Whether you look at it or not, just going, you, it's going you're going to get it. That's why I say it's going to come up on you as a thief in the night. Right. Because you, know, you don't know about it. We know about it. We, we know all the signs. We know how to escape it. But being that ain't nobody taught it to you out of the Bible, you don't know. This is going to be just like a thief. Did he come in your house? You out somewhere partying, carrying on. He at home in your house taking your jewelry and everything of value from you. And when you get back, you're going to find out that you have been destroyed. 
Verse 11. Verse 15, rather. Revelation 11 and 15. This is the seventh trumpet, and let's see what's, what it says here. Verse 15. Go ahead. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, uh -huh. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Now, that's when the Lord is going to take down the earth just like Moses took down Egypt, sister and brother. Seven plagues. The first three was on the whole world. Then he separated his servant. Then he brought the seven. Just like it was then. Just like Moses, uh, uh, after that seventh uh, uh, plague, the, the firstborn died, Israel was strong, sisters and brothers. When that seventh trumpet is blown, that's when the Lord is going to come and take down his earth, and he is going to do like Moses. He's going to start delivering his people and take over this earth. Said in Zechariah the ninth chapter, his dominion, his dominion is going to be from sea to sea, from the river, that's the river Jordan, even to the end of the earth. But nobody teaches this kind of stuff, sisters and brothers. Now let's go and show you that when Moses went back to Egypt, he sprung Israel. Now let's see when Jesus is going to spring us and the rest of the world. Let's go into Luke, the 21st chapter. Luke chapter 21. I mean, all you got to do is see what happened with Moses, then you're going to know what, what the world is going to do. And you know who, what's going to happen to the world, and you're going to know who it is that's going to make it happen to the world. 21, we're going to start in verse 20. 21 and 20, because... The Lord started when Israel was taken out, and he's going to show you that the, that, uh, 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 and take it down to when he come and spring Israel. 21 and 20, read it. And when you shall see Jerusalem compass with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is now. See, this is, see people get this con confused with 70 A.D., but he is starting back at 70 A.D. Because the Romans had surrounded all of Israel, all Jerusalem, and they had built a bank of levy around them, so couldn't nobody get in or couldn't nobody get out. When somebody tried to come in, they catch them, they caught them, and they hung them. When somebody tried to get out, they caught them, and they hung them. History books will tell you that the Romans in 70 A.D. was crucifying 500 Israelites a day. And you only know about Jesus and the two thieves. Then you walk around with a cross on your neck, represent Jesus. No, it don't. It represent a Roman death sentence. They was crucifying people before Jesus, and they crucified people after Jesus. And history will tell you, when you're crucifying five hundred dollars a day, uh, five hundred people a day, that's a whole lot of people, ain't it? So now, seven A.D. fulfill this twenty-eight, this twentieth chapter. Skip down to verse twenty-four. And go ahead. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Uh -huh. And shall be led away captive into all nations. Go ahead. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's why we scattered into all nations right now. The northern kingdom, which is nine tribes, was scattered by the Assyrians. We were scattered by the Babylonians. And then we served the Medo Persian. Then we served the Greeks, and we served the Romans, and in 7 A.D., the Roman general Titus scattered, destroyed Jerusalem and scattered us to all over the Mediterranean, and they finally got here. Go ahead and read. And there shall be signs in the sun, uh -huh. and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now, this took us down to the coming of the Lord. You understand? Because he said in the 24th chapter, we're going to be in captivity until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Who are the Gentiles? The children of Japheth. Who are the children of Japheth? Europeans are the white folks. Who is running this world right now? They run in Africa too. Run it everywhere. You know why? Because it is the times of the Gentiles. But then, at the time of the Gentiles, 
And when it's over with, then you're going to see it. Read that 24th verse to the entirety. 24? Yes, go back to 24 and read it to the entirety. Go ahead and read. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And Israel swear, fell by the edge of the sword in 7 AD. Go ahead. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And were led captives into all nations. Don't you know you're the only one in this whole hemisphere that was brought here against your will as slaves? Nobody else. Go ahead and read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles uh -huh. until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. So everybody going to run Jerusalem. Sure, we got Edomites over there, but who put them over there? The Gentiles did, sister and brother. Don't y'all know that? And then you got a lot of them that are not Edomites. They're converted Jews or Gentiles over there. But the last one that's going to run it is Europe, Western Europe, and the Pope. Pure Gentile. And we're going to be in captivity until the Lord give them their time to rule. And when they get him to, and when their time is up, it is up. Because God gave every one of Noah's son a chance to run this earth. All of them dropped the ball. The children of Ham dropped it. The children of Shem dropped it. And now the children of Japheth, which is the Gentile, they dropped it too. Now we go into verse 25. Go ahead. And once that over with, we already read this in Revelation. What's going to happen? Go ahead and read. And there should be signs of the sun. Didn't it say the sun going to turn black? Go ahead. And in the moon. Didn't it say that the moon going to turn red? Right. Go ahead. And in the stars. And the stars are going to fall from heaven. Go ahead and read. And, and upon the earth distress of nations Go ahead. with perplexity, uh -huh. the sea and the waves roaring. Uh -huh. Men's hearts failing them for fear. They're going to have a whole lot of heart attacks going on at that time. Because there's going to be fear on every side. Go ahead and read. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. Go ahead. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Go ahead. And then you shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Now you're going to see Jesus coming. He's been sitting there. You're seeing him in the air, and he's sitting on the throne. All the time he's wrecking, he's wreaking all this haybock on the earth. You're looking at it. Well, I don't know that. And then when he get up on that throne, here he come. Go ahead and read. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head. Uh huh. For your redemption draw it now. He said, now when you see these things come to pass, he's telling you, look up. Because now your redemption is nigh. Don't you know what, you know, what, 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 what does redeem, redeem mean? To recover you. It is near, not before. Got people are trying to go over in Israel and set up. No, no. De Israel was not sprung out of Egypt until Moses came. And you are not going to be sprung out of captivity until Jesus comes. Not a day before. Go ahead and read. And he spake to them a parable. Behold. What verse was that? That was the end of 28. Okay, that was the end of 28. Then that's enough. So he said, look up. When you see him coming, know that your redemption, redemption is nigh. But we know about all this stuff. We're going to know what's going on. Now let's go into Matthews, the 24th chapter. Matthews chapter 24. I'm kind of on fast speed to get out of here. <laughs> Matthews 24, and we're going to start reading at verse 27, because the time going to come when they build a temple, and Papa going to move into it, then the world, the room, the, 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 uh, they're going to be a saying all over the world, Christ is back. He is in the temple. Because the scripture said he's going to stand in the temple of God, showing himself yes, to be God. God. Everybody going to say, Christ is back. But Jesus said, when you hear him say he's in the desert, go not far. When you hear him say that he's in the secret place, chambers, go not far. Because this is the way you're going to see me coming. Verse 27, read it. For as the lightning coming out of the east uh -huh. and shineth even into the west, go ahead. so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So shall also the Son, uh, the coming of the Son of Man be. Look what he said. Go ahead and read. 
Well, wheresoever the carcass is, uh -huh. there will the eagles be gathered together. Go ahead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Go ahead and read. Till the sun be darkened. The sun gonna be darkened. And the moon shall not give a light. Moon's gonna give not gonna give a light. Go ahead. And the stars shall fall from heaven. Uh huh. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Now, didn't we just read this in St. John, the 21st chapter? We also read it Luke. in Revelation, the 6th chapter. It was Luke. I mean, St. Luke, the 21st chapter. I'm looking right at St. Luke here in my notes. We just read that. The Lord cannot come until this happens. And this is going to happen when the times of the Gentiles is over with. Then you're going to see all this happen. Go ahead and read. And then shall appear the, sun, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Go ahead. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Sure they're going to mourn because he's going to bring some more pain on it. Go ahead and read. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now they're going to see him coming. Go ahead and read. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Look, Moses had to flee Egypt, but when he came back to Egypt, he sprung Israel, didn't he? Jesus left his earth, but when he come back his earth, he gonna take it down and he gonna spring Israel, just like Moses did. He doing it just like Moses. That's why the Lord said, I'm going to raise up a prophet like unto you from among your brothers. He's going to do the same thing, sisters and brothers. The exact same thing. Now let's go into Isaiah. Because he's going to string that, that trumpet. That's, going, that's the seventh trumpet. That's after the seventh plague. Now let's go into Isaiah, the 27th chapter. Isaiah chapter 27. That's why if you want to know what Jesus is going to do and what's going to happen when he comes back, Go and see what happened with Moses. Isaiah chapter 27. But it all started with that seventh plague, which is announced by the seventh trumpet. Just like when that seventh plague, when the Lord killed the firstborn of Egypt, it was time to leave. And the Egyptians pressed up on them to leave because they said, as long as y'all here, we are all dead, man. Your God is going to kill us all. Mm -hmm. After the seventh plague, they're going to blow that trumpet. And what's going to hurt us going to happen with that trumpet? Verse 12, Isaiah chapter 27 and verse 12. Read it. And it shall come to pass in that day. Go ahead. That the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river until the stream of Egypt. Go ahead. And ye shall be gathered one by one, you old ye children of Israel. That lets you know he ain't going to leave nobody. One by one, wherever you are, somebody is going to take you up and say, get on out of here. Like he didn't leave one Israelite in Egypt. Not one. Not one. Because the Egyptians said, all of y'all leave. Because as long as any of you here, your God is going to kill us all. Ain't going to be no different. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the great trumpet shall be blown. That's that seventh trumpet. Go ahead and read. And they shall come which were ready to, be, to perish in the land of Assyria uh -huh. and the outcast in the land of Egypt uh -huh. and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Now, other scriptures let you know not only in Egypt and Assyria, but from everywhere they're going to come and they're going to be, go, go to Israel, and they're going to worship the Lord, which is in, Jew, in Jerusalem. What? On the seventh trumpet. Just like when Moses came back, Jesus is going to come back, and they're going to do the same thing. They are going to deliver. Let's go and back up to Isaiah, the 11th chapter. Isaiah chapter 11. Because the world has been deceived. The world thinks they're going somewhere. You ain't going nowhere. And if you ain't ready, you're going to deal with something you ain't ready for. Isaiah 11 started verse 10. 11 and verse 10. Okay, read it. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, uh -huh. which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Go ahead. To which shall the Gentiles seek. Go ahead. And his rest shall be glorious. Wait, if they already got a God, then why are they going to be seeking the root of David? That is Jesus, sister and brother. That means it's Jesus they're seeking now. It's not the Jesus that's going to sit on David's throne. 
Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. Wait a minute. Ain't that Israel over there now? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> he should have said, if it was Israel, then he should have said the third time, should he? That's right. Uh-uh, a second time. Go ahead and read. To recover the remnant of his people. That's why I said, look up, then you're going to know that your redemption is nigh. Go ahead and read. Which shall be left from Assyria uh -huh. and from Egypt. I'm going to show you a thing here. Assyria, that's a black nation. That's right. They come out of Ethiopia. That's right. People don't know that. Egypt, that's a black nation. Go ahead. And from Pathro. Black nation. And from Cush. Black nation, that's and Ethiopia. And from Elam. And from Elam. And from Shana. And from Shana. And from Hamath. Uh huh. And from the islands of the sea. Now, all of these, except for Hamath, the black nation, and then it's from the island of the sea, he finally got around to us. That means he is going to deliver every Israelite on the planet. Go ahead and read. And he shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. They're going to set an ensign. That means the people are going to start bringing you. We're taking you to Israel. Ain't no Israelite. Ain't no Jew. That's all right. Come on anyway. Skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. And the Lord shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. Uh -huh. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river. Go ahead. And shall smite in it the seven streams uh -huh. and make men go over dry shod. Didn't he drive up the river of Jordan for Joshua? Yes, he did. Just like he drove to the Red Sea for Israel? That's right. When he come back, he going to drive up a river somewhere and the whole world going to see it. And people going to go over dry shot. Have you seen a river dried up anywhere yet? Let alone somebody going across it. The Lord letting you know what he's going to do. It's very, why did he do that? Because he did in the days of Moses. That's right. Go ahead and read. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, uh -huh. which shall be left from Assyria, uh -huh. like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. So just people just like in Assyria and other places, it's going to be just like it was in the days of Egypt. Ain't going to be no different. And Jesus is the one that's going to call this sister and brother. He is the one going to call it. Is he going to take them? So when the, is the Lord took Israel out of Egypt, did he take them directly to the land? No. Uh-uh. He took them to the wilderness. Right. Let me show you where he's going to take you here. Then we got three more places after this, and I'll let you out of here. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. And we're going to start at verse 34. I used to wonder, why did the Lord say that he's going to rule over you with a mighty hand and with fury pour it out? That's because I see now all these Hebrews kicking against him. Yep. Let's bring it in. Skip up the verse, back up to verse 33 and start. Verse 33. Go ahead. As I live, said the Lord God, Surely with the mighty hand and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. He said, I'm going to rule over you, mister. You understand? This Hebrew don't want him. He ain't never want the Lord to rule over. He said, with fury poured out, I'm going to rule over you. Go ahead and read. And I will bring you out from the people. Uh-huh. And will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered. Uh-huh. With the mighty hand and with, and with the stretched out arm and with fury poured out. We done seen that happen. That's right. Because he done destroyed this earth. Go ahead and read. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Uh -huh. And there will I plead with you face to face. Like as now, I now, he took Israel. Didn't Moses take Israel in the wilderness? Sir. He's going to take us in the same wilderness. And he's he going to flee with us face to face. Moses played with Israel face to face. Jesus is going to be on his earth. Plead with Israel face to face. You going to look at it. Go ahead and read. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, uh -huh. so will I plead what you said, the Lord God. You know that there's nothing different? No. Go ahead and read. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. Go ahead. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Go ahead. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. Uh -huh. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. Now look what he said. He's going to cause you to pass under the rod. 
He's going to whoop your hand, and he's going to bring you into the bond of the covenant. Don't you know how you come into the bond of the covenant? By getting baptized in Jesus' name. And I got some of my Hebrew brothers ain't going there. Mm. And if he don't go there, he's going to be just like his father, our father. He's going to purge out from among you the rebels. That's the people that rebel, that rebel against Jesus. And he's going to go ahead and finish that. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You're going to be brought from all over the world, eat against your will, if you don't come willingly. I mean, wherever you are, you're in Europe, East and Western Europe, Central and South America, here in the American period, in Africa, wherever you are, the Lord is going to recover every one of you and bring you into the wilderness. You're going to come that far and go stupid and call Jesus, J.C., and Zeus and die there. Is this what the book telling you? What the book is telling us. You're going to fall there, sisters and brothers, in the wilderness. You know why? Because you said, hey, I ain't serving no JC. <laughs> but then the people tell Moses, who made you? Didn't the guy tell There's Moses who made thing? you a rule and a judge over us? Let's go into Acts, the seventh chapter, and see what happened. Acts chapter 7. I know it's a long lesson, sister and brother, but there's some points that need to be made. Because you need to know who this, who this uh, uh, prophet like under Moses is. He said, well, you know, take a long time. What you going to do when the Sabbath day is over? What you going to do? You going to go home. And you going to sit on your couch and do nothing. At least you should learn something while you're doing nothing. Acts chapter 7. You recall, Brother Boo, that's a long lesson today calling the phone. Yeah, man, what you doing? Oh, I'm sitting on the couch. <laughs> so what's the great accomplishment? What's the great hurry to get out of here? This is Sabbath day anyway. If you're supposed to do it, what you going to do on the Sabbath day? We're going to read one verse, Acts 7 and 35. Acts 7 and 35. 7 and 35. Go ahead. This Moses whom they refused, saying, who made thee a ruler and a judge, the same did God send to be a ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. Now, see what the man told Moses? Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? That same Moses that this guy said to, who made you a ruler and a judge, became their ruler and their deliverer. Same thing with Jesus, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Acts the fourth chapter now. Acts the fourth chapter. And we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, start at verse 10. Acts 4 and verse 10. Okay, go ahead. Be it known unto you all uh -huh. and to all the people of Israel go ahead. that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you hold. So now, Peter then might have healed a man. And he tell you, look, I want all y'all to know that same Jesus that y'all crucified and God raised, by his name is this man healed. Go ahead and read. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders. This is the stone that you builders rejected. That's, That's set at right. naught of you builders. Go ahead and read. Which has become the head of the corner. Which has become the head of the corner. They are rebelling against Jesus. Israel is. They don't rejected him. Don't nobody want to. Deal with him. They're going to go against the, the, the letter J and against this and against that. But he said, the stone that you rejected, he has become the head of the corner. Read the next verse. Neither is there salvation in any other. Uh -huh. But there is none other name under heaven giving among men whereby we must be saved. But neither is there salvation in any other name. 
Jesus is the only name given under heaven whereby men might be saved. But if you see the same thing, who saved the people in Egypt? Moses did. God was going to kill all the, Mo all the Israel and Moses talked him out of it. God had Moses to direct the assault on Israel, on Egypt, brother. God had Moses to stretch out his staff across the Red Sea and separate it so Israel can go out of bondage into freedom. And God would listen to nobody but Moses. That's why in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, it tells you when Israel come through the Red Sea, they was baptized unto Moses. That was the only man and the only name given unto the son at that time whereby Most Israel be might be saved. That's right. Moses. Finish this. What verse were we? That was the end of uh, 12. So now, that's why when Moses, whatever Moses did to deliver his people, whoever do the same had to be like Moses. Let's go to the last place. Let's go in the back up to Acts, the third chapter. Acts, the third chapter, and we're going to start at verse 19, 3 and 19. Okay, go ahead. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Go ahead. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which, be, which, be, which before was preached to you. And he's going to send Jesus Christ, which was preached before, which before was preached unto you. Go ahead. Whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restoration or when everything is going to be restored. Go ahead and read. Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Since the world began. Who started first? Go ahead. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Uh -huh. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Now we know that prophet that the Lord was talking to Moses, talking about was Jesus. He told Moses about. Verse 23, go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Because this prophet is Jesus, and the only name given under heaven whereby men might be saved is Jesus. Who is Jesus? The prophet like unto Moses. I thank you for suffering with me. 